So, what do you do on a rainy Sunday afternoon? Make meatballs. Hi everyone, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs and this is my weekly vlog. So it's Monday, June the 5th and let's get right into it. Oh, did you like the teaser? Yeah, hamburger was on sale this weekend. So we bought all kinds of it and Walter made 29 hamburger patties for the barbecue and a couple of huge bags of meatballs. You can never have too many meatballs, okay? You can do a thousand things with them, they're great. So anyways, that's why I thought I'd show you that. Um, okay, so what have I been up to? Well, I've been doing some more abstracts. Go figure, right? Surprise, surprise, surprise. So, um, I'll show these to you. And, um, here they are. So, I've been, I've, I'm doing a series of videos on acrylic pouring techniques. Um, I'm doing that because I know there's lots of videos out there, um, about it. But I just want to show my, uh, spin on how to do it uh, as well. And I've had a couple of people request uh, that I do them as well. So I thought I'd do as a series and sort of like I do with my uh, crap videos, I'm sort of experimenting uh, as you watch. So my next video, I have two up already, uh, one on basic pouring and another one on uh, spin pouring. And spin pouring is where you uh, get this kind of effect. This is an old record and uh, I have a contraption. If you watch that video, it's uh, video number two in the acrylic pouring series. I show you how I do this kind of thing. Now, I'm going to do another video where I'm going to show different things used on what I call my spinner, the little device that I put together that allows me to spin this around in the paint, get the paint poured on it. This particular piece I used as a sample. Um, I'm not that fond of the color combination that I used, um, but that's okay because, you know, these records are cheap. I buy them at uh, Value Village um, for, I think they're $1.99 for an old record. You see? It's just an old record on the back. In fact, this one is Championship Fiddle Favorites. Yeah, geez, I'm afraid. I'm sorry that I put art on top of that one. Really? Yeah, mm, not. Um, so, I'm going to do some more videos. I'm going to show different things I can use on my spinner uh, to put acrylic paint on. That may work, may not work. I'll give you a hint. I found uh, the other day in a cupboard I was cleaning out some old uh, glass candle bases, you know, little holders. They're just flat things. I probably bought them at the dollar store or something some time ago. And I'm thinking, hmm, these might make neat little uh, candle holders if I put them on the spinner and did some acrylic pouring on them. I'm just not sure how well acrylic paint's going to stick to glass. i got to experiment with that a little bit. And, of course, in video number one, I was showing some basic pouring. And I'm still not, I think this one should go up this way. Uh, so here's a finished piece. And this time I limited my palette. I just used black and white. And I used a little bit of pewter uh, in there as well. Although the pewter kind of turned out to look a little bit more bronzy, I guess. But it said on the tube of paint it was pewter. Um, and I made a, out of the same pour, I made a little smaller piece. And uh, this is a little different method. Um, and I explain in that video how you go about getting this kind of pattern. So I'm getting quite a collection of these acrylic backgrounds that I've been pouring and they're starting to pile up. So what am I going to do with them? Well, I wanted to, you know, after a while, I mean, it's fun to do this technique and it's fun to, you know, muck about and experiment. But after a while, are you going to hang them all in your house? Yeah, because they're all going to start to look basically the same. So I want to make them stand out a little bit. Need a little sip, just a sec. Okay. And um, as you know, in past vlogs, I've showed you some things called wire wrapping that I did. And I did do one piece where I put some, some of those pieces I'd made onto uh, one of my poured acrylic backgrounds. And it kind of makes it interesting. So I thought, you know, maybe get a little bit more sophisticated with the wire wrapping, wire weaving. And a week ago, I was over at Chapters, and I saw this book. Now, at the time, I looked through it, and I thought, well, it's an expensive book. Like, it's $32 for this book. 
And I thought, well, the stuff they're showing in here I can probably find on YouTube. But then I got thinking about it the other day, and we happened to be over at Chapters, and I said to Walter, yeah, I'm going to buy that book. Because it's got some interesting information. It's got some good diagrams and things like that. And uh, so I thought, yeah, I think it's worth the investment. And my idea is to make some larger pieces, um, and I'll use this book as a guide to get started, and sort of abstract wire wrapping pieces, and then I'm going to adhere them to the back, to the acrylic pores, using them as a background. And I think that'll make them stand out. Maybe I'll add a few other mixed media pieces as well. So in a sense, I'm kind of blending abstract art with mixed media and see how that works out. You know, something a little different. So, whatever the results of those are, I'll let you see them in future videos. Okay, so that's what I've been up to. I'm just looking around here to see if I forgot anything. Um, no. So, let's go right to the YouTube channel of the week. So the YouTube channel for this week is Deliberately Creative. I have just recently come across this a particular YouTube site and the way I found it is um, actually go on to uh, suggested or recommended uh, playlists or channels that you'll find on other YouTube uh, channels you might be watching. That's how I discovered this one and she is really good uh, about showing you how to use acrylic painting styles. Uh, I, I looked at her for ideas for poured uh, acrylics but I also found her very helpful for other forms of both art and crafts. She does paper crafts, she does videos on how to draw, she does videos on using acrylic paints in various uh, styles and techniques. So I really think she's a great resource for one, how-to videos, and also as inspiration. So check that out, it's deliberately creative, it's all one word, and I think you'll get some inspiration. Okay, so that was the YouTube channel of the week, and now it's time for what's pissing me off this week. All right, what I'm about to say, and I'm really not sure what I'm about to say because I don't script any of this stuff, as you can tell, um, is something that happened this weekend. That really pissed me off. The reason I'm hesitating to even bring this topic up is because it's a controversial topic. I can't remain neutral and objective about it, I am probably going to say some things that may be offensive to some people or some groups or to some people's ideas. I don't mean to be offensive, but you want to know something? Everybody's opinion is important, and so is mine. And this is something that has really been bug bugging me lately. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what was on this weekend that started this. Okay, out where I live... This week, the first weekend in June, just passed, is Durham Pride Week. And the big Pride Parade uh, was on Sunday here in Oshawa. Now, Oshawa does not have a huge LGBTQ community, but in the past, our parades have been growing. They're not huge. Not huge at all. In fact, we joke about it that it takes more time for the people to line up and to march in the parade than the actual length of the parade itself. You know, the parade, basically, if they walk slow, runs 10 to 15 minutes, if that. Okay? But over the last few years, it's been progressively getting a little bigger, and it all culminates into a big uh, sort of uh, social gathering party with entertainment and vendors and a beer garden and food and things like that in the park that's downtown Oshawa. Uh, if the weather's nice, it's a really kind of nice day uh, out. And people bring their kids. It's a family-friendly event, the whole bit. And it just lets Oshawa know that we are here. We're not going anywhere. Oh, by the way, if you haven't figured out yet that I'm gay, duh, okay? So, anyways... We went for this year. Now, the weather yesterday did not cooperate. It was gray, it was rainy, it was damp, and it was a little bit cold for June. Okay? Figures. Um, but people were out for it. Um, not as many as usual at, at, for, at, in comparison to other times. Um, and so the parade took place. Well, 
this was a joke. And when I say this was a joke, I don't mean this was a ha-ha funny joke. This was, this was embarrassing. First of all, I told you the parade never lasts very long. It's not that big. This went, was finished in record time. Two minutes, maybe. Two minutes, I, I mean it. There were a few groups there, but not very many. Uh, that, you know, that usually come out for it. The cops led the parade with their cars to block off the side streets. The, the parade only runs about two blocks, really. Um, but the funny thing was, we're standing on the sidewalk to watch it go by. Well, we should have been standing in the middle of the road because the parade came up the sidewalk. There was a big group at the very beginning. They had protest signs about various issues, and they had a couple of people on blow horns. And I don't know. It, first of all, a parade, a pride parade is supposed to be fun. It's a celebration. It's a good time. This did not set that kind of mood. This was like a whole lot of angry people um, protesting. Then behind them, on the sidewalk, came everybody else. Well, the reason they were on the sidewalk, I kind of figured it out later, was because the uh, police had put their cars at a, an intersection of this street to block off people coming in the cross traffic. But I guess they didn't want to block off another busier part of the street that people had to come off from. And so they probably told them, well, for, until you get up to the cop cars, just go on the sidewalk. There weren't that many of them, so they fit. And then go on to the street, because that'll be blocked off. Well, I don't think anybody got the right information, because half of the group stayed on the sidewalk for a while. It was funny. But I'm looking at some other people that are watching this on the street, like, uh, what's that all about? And before I knew it, bang, it was over. That was it. Um, now... Why did this disturb me? Okay, several different things here, okay? If you'll just bear with me for a moment. I need some coffee. Okay, first of all, the organization of the Durham Pride Parade stunk. It was a, it's all I can say about it, okay? Every year there's a committee that puts this together, and kudos to them, because I know that's got to be a really tough job. But I heard through the grapevine at one point, about a month or so ago at something I was at, that the committee had broken apart, had dissolved, or whatever. So I think, and I don't know for sure, I think somebody else took took up where the other group had left off. But by then it was probably too late to do a lot of arrangements for things. So it was poorly advertised what was going on. I don't know how the other events that they had, and there weren't that many different events, were attended. But I know one of the events was our RMG Fridays, which Walter and I volunteer at. And that one, every year they have it. It's Durham Pride Celebration. They had a drag queen at it. And you're going to see little clips of this uh, later on in, in the vlog today. And they had, uh, um, you know, things there that were Pride um, related. Uh, not a very big showing. Uh, we probably only had slightly over 100 people at that. Um, whereas we've been averaging close to 400 every RMG Friday. Now, mind you, the weather on Friday night was nice. It was a warm evening. Uh, the sun was shining. We've had so much rain in the last little while and gray skies that people probably just wanted to be out and enjoy the evening uh, because of the nice weather. I mean, after all, this is Canada and, you know, we get summer and it goes. It's blink. We're done. So, as Canadians, we try to get out there and enjoy as much of that sunshine as we can get when we can get it. So that could have been one of the reasons. But also the crowd that were there, I would say the vast majority of them were just, well, were not related to in one way or another to the LGBTQ community, which is fine. Um, it's not a closed session or anything like that. Everyone's welcome. But it just seemed pretty lackadaisy. And I think part of the problem there was lack of getting the word out of what was going on for Pride Week. They had an official Facebook page that told you diddly squat about anything. In past years, they've had a big gala. We've been to it. It's a, you buy tickets, you get dressed up, you go. It's a nice fancy dinner. They have a silent auction, all this kind of stuff. Um, the one we went to last year was actually, they outdid themselves. It was, it was great. This year, 
If they had one, I never saw any advertisements for it. I heard nothing about it, so I don't think that happened. So whatever. Lack of organization uh, with it all. And you had, that was apparent when they came up the sidewalk in the parade. Like, this was just to, to someone who didn't know what was going on, they still wouldn't have known what was going on. Uh, the stuff in the park, um, it was about standard, but there weren't a lot of people out. Now, we didn't hang around, so maybe a lot of people came later. The sun was trying to break through the clouds. It wasn't very successful. It had stopped raining. Um, they had vendors there. The vendors were selling junk, quite frankly, junk. Some of it they disguise as being creative or whatever, but, I mean, there was even one booth that had our, I guess, our local group of witches. I didn't know we had witches. I don't know if they're Wiccans, white witches, whatever. Actually, I've got nothing against witches. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, neat. But they were selling witchy stuff, I guess. Um, so it wasn't, wasn't particularly exciting. Okay, that's one thing. You know, if you're going to run these things, you gotta, you have to have, you know, organization. Now, here, here's what someone would say to me about that. Well, then, if you don't like it, why don't you get involved? Uh, I have been involved. I have, in past years, I have been involved. In fact, I was on the very first committee that, cre that started Durham Pride way back about 10 years ago. I think it's 10 years ago. Let's see. Yep. It was just before Walter and I got married, so we've been married 12 years this year. Yep. So over 10 years ago. And um, so I do know that it's a difficult thing to put together. Um, but I've done my part in that. I've done things for PFLAG. Uh, you know, I've been out there even when I was a teacher. I was involved in committees at the board level as well for, you know, looking at LGBTQ issues and things within the school system and that. So I've done my part. So I know of what I speak. Okay. Um... But what really pissed me off were the protesters. And here's why. And here's where it's going to get controversial. And someone's going to... I'm going to get hate mail over this. But so what? Such is life. Okay. I don't know. It depends on what part of the world you're in. But back a year ago, the big Pride Parade in Toronto happens on the long weekend in July, which is what we call Canada Day. Okay? Uh, it's like the American... Independence Day, that kind of thing. It's ours, okay? It's a huge parade in Toronto. It draws over a million people, spectators. If people bring their kids, their family, their supporters of the LGBT community, they are parents of, uh, of gay and lesbian, transgendered children. It's all out there, and it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's usually very well organized. There's all kinds of vendors. There's uh, entertainment. There's food. There's everything. And the culmination of the whole thing, and it's a Pride Month actually, is the parade. And everybody's out there having a good time. People have water guns in the parade, on the floats. The groups that are marching, they're squirting each other with the water. They're squirting, squirting the crowd. The squir crowd squirts back. Everything. It's just fun. One of the biggest events in Toronto every year. Draw, brings in a lot of tourism, brings in a lot of money. Last year, one group decided to, to it was their right to stop the parade by marching in it, sitting down, and physically stopping the parade. This was the group that's called Black Lives Matter. They are a group that are based out of the United States. They're shit disturbers, is what they are. They're trying to make the issue that the Toronto police are brutalizing the black community. And they would not move off the parade route and let the parade start again until the committee people on, on uh, Toronto Pride had signed a declaration that said in this year's parade coming up that uniformed policemen would not be allowed to march in a parade. Yeah... A group that considers themselves to be marginalized want to marginalize another group. Pride parades are about being inclusive. Everyone is welcome. These idiots, there's no other word for it, these idiots stop this parade to try and get across their issues. 
what's worse is they got their way. The Toronto Police have not always been supportive of the gay community. Many years ago, way back in the history of gay pride, uh, the cops were not on our side. But over the years, that has changed. They have openly gay members of the police force that march in the parade, in uniform and out of uniform. The police are great supporters of the Pride Parade. The Pride Parade is the most peaceful parade there is in Toronto. I have yet to hear of anyone being shot, beaten up, or any violence in the parade in all the years that they have had the parade. Cannot say the same about several other major parades that happen in Toronto. Because people are there to have a good time. That's what it is. But you get a group like Black Lives Matter who stop the parade, hold it at ransom, hold it at ransom. We're not going to move until they signed a declaration with the Durham Pride, or not Durham Pride, Toronto Pride Committee to get what they wanted, which was no uniform police in the parade. Is that an act of terrorism? Yes, it is an act of terrorism. They just were waiting for the cops to come along and start forcefully, forcefully removing them. And that was not really going to happen, because that's not our way in this country. But that's what they wanted. They wanted a confrontation. At the time, the uh, organizers of the Pride signed the paper just to get the parade moving on, I'm pretty sure. And then, basically, the people who were on that committee resigned. New ones came on, and don't you know, but they have a member of the Black Lives Matters uh, group on the committee. It's so bad that the union of the police in Toronto went to City Hall and asked City Hall to not give the grant money they usually give to the Pride Parade every year, which is well over $200,000. They had to bring it to a vote at the council, and the council, by a very slim margin, voted to continue supporting the Pride Parade, which I think was wrong. I think that was very wrong. Because this now sets a precedent. So, this year, no uniform cops. Next year, what other group will get out there and get blown away by the, by the very specific needs or philosophies of one group. I have nothing against groups protesting. That is their right to protest, peacefully protest. But when you get, you try to take your protest and, and put it onto a different venue that has nothing to do with what you, what your issues are, and basically hijack that, that other group, then that's an act of terrorism. You're holding people at ransom. And so, back to the Durham Pride Parade, they had a big sign at the beginning, uh, the ones with the bullhorns uh, that were shouting back and forth, stuff that didn't make a lot of sense, really, either. I don't know what they were saying. They had a little chant, something like that. It was ridiculous. Oh, I sound like Trump. It was ridiculous. Ridiculous, yeah. Well, they had a big sign. And on the sign says... Um, Something about our cops, we support our cops out of uniform. <sighs> well, maybe that is why the only cops we saw for the Durham Pride this year were the ones in the cop car clearing the road ahead and the ones at the end of the parade just blocking traffic until the parade got safely to its destination. I don't know. But in past years, the cops have been more visible in the parade. They even have a car that has LGBTQ colors all over it, and it says that on it as well. So, anyways, what was pissing me off? That. That you take something that's a celebration, that includes, that's inclusive, and you hold it at ransom for your very particular philosophy. There's other ways to protest. Yep. Yeah. So, anyways, I'm still 
pissed off about this. I will be pissed off, and I know some of you are going to get all up high and mighty in my face about the whole thing, about Black Lives Matter, blah, blah, blah. All lives matter as far as I'm concerned, and I've done some research into this group, and the leaders of this group are simply this, nothing more than shit disturbers. And in fact, here's the ironic twist. The Black Lives Matter, after all their protesting last year and everything that they did, they're not even marching in the Toronto Pride Parade. Need I say more? No. I've said enough. Okay. That's what's pissing me off this week. Okay? Let the hate mail begin. Remember that one vlog I had about what I do with hate mail? <laughs> okay. Let's move on. All right. So, events in the past week. Well, of course, the Durham Pride. Um... I did a couple of tours for kids at the art gallery, and those were great. We're, we're starting to wind down now, um, our year. Uh, the school year will end in another couple of weeks, and that'll be the end of the, the educational tours until next September. So we're having, today, actually, our um, annual volunteers, educators, luncheon. And this year, we're doing at one of the volunteers' house, and right now the weather's not cooperating. It looks kind of gray out there probably threatening rain, but uh, it doesn't matter. We're a fun group. There's not many of us, but it's fun, and this is really great that uh, Wayne's doing this. That's one of the educators. He's opened his house up to us to have this event, so that's going to be fun. Um, so, what else? Um, what's coming up? Well, besides that, I've got a couple more tours, I said, this week, and next weekend's pretty open, so nothing really too exciting. So, I'm going to insert right here a quick little video I did. It, it, I just patched some pieces together of RMG uh, Friday. So you're going to, I think you're going to see some of the entertainment we had. Remember, it was Durham Pride, so it, the entertainment fit that. And I'm giving you a really quick glimpse of the gallery as well and some of the abstract. And I've been thinking about maybe doing um, a, a longer video that highlights the gallery because I talk about it so much for you. So if you're, if you're interested in me putting that in as either maybe a separate video or doing it, incorporating it in part of my one of my vlogs, uh, let me know and I can probably do that. Um, so right now, here's just a little taste and it's pretty raw stuff, okay? I didn't do any editing except splice some pieces together of RMG Fridays. What number are we at? A B13 bingo? I'm not sure. <laughs> Luckily, I'm here for glitter, I've right? been lost the whole time. Um, but I just wanted to, it being cried here, uh, talk about the importance of drag queens within the LGBTQ community and um, within really the gay liberation movement, from one of the drag queens being the first to ever throw a rock over um, within the snowball in and the involvement of drag queens to really start all those protests. So I, it's so important to really, as you can see, your 19 plus that brings people together, and if it doesn't, it does as well. So, we are so excited to have you guys here. There's so much going on all weekend, so make sure you check out more, and I'll be back in a little bit to do another number for you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, this is RMG Fridays, what I've told you about before, that uh, this is the art gallery I hang out in, and I give tours and things like that, and tonight is our first Friday of every month, uh, Thing that we do. You just saw a performance by uh, one of the local drag queens. Uh, we have a variety of, of, of entertainment that happens on RMG Fridays here. And because this is Pride Week in my town, um, and we're celebrating Pride. So that's the reason for the drag queen. Now here's some of the abstract art. And uh, these pieces are great. Um, I kind of use these as my inspiration for some of my acrylic pores and some of the things you've seen me do. I really like these though. These are great. 
Now this is just one of the galleries here. It's not a huge art gallery. We have two large spaces like this and then we have a hallway and some inner spaces down there uh, as well. And uh, you saw where we have our main uh, display as well when I did the video of the drag queen performance. You can see all the abstract art that's there and that's part of our permanent collection. So anyways, this is sort of my home away from home. Um, I'm here quite a bit doing tours and things with the kids and uh, I enjoy it quite a bit. Um, and I've learned an awful lot about art and I find it very inspirational as well. So I just thought I'd give you a little glimpse of what things look like here. Uh, if I get a chance, I'll show you a shot where the people are hanging out. And this is where main uh, here. And this is where the bar goes and the people are walking around with the between performances. So I'm about to give a little show to her as well. Um, sorry I can't take you on that because I need my hands free for this. Anyways, just give you an idea of the kind of places. Fridays again as you've seen and what we usually do is we come to this little restaurant here it's called Melanie Pringles and we order a pitcher of beer and a big thing of nachos and bury ourselves in those. It's become a tradition so much so that the girl at the bar knows who we are and knows exactly what our order is as soon as we come in and we only do this once a month. Okay so I hope you got a little bit of a glimpse of what goes on but there's so much more to the art gallery than just what I showed you there so as I said I might make a video a little bit more detailed um, if you're interested so let me know so anyways I hope you have a good week and uh, feel free to make comments about what I've said um, I like a duck they'll go right off my back okay if it's nasty whatever uh, I do want to thank those people out there who have been sending me very nice comments okay you know I don't do it for praise you know that uh, but you know sometimes a nice comment just sets your day off very nicely so, having said that, thank you for the nice comments, you're great, and I hope you have a fabulous week. Bye-bye.